I built a heavy-duty mailbox for a friend of mine who was sick and tired of snow plows and baseball bats destroying his. I'm going to show you how I fabbed and welded it. I might even have a few tips for you. Then I'm going to test its indestructibility by parking my F-250 on top of it. This is a leftover piece of quarter-inch carbon steel plate. Unfortunately, I had just trimmed my fingernails, so it was very difficult to pick up off the concrete floor. However, after a brief struggle, I did manage to wrestle it up onto my table. I'm Drew, I'm a welder, a pipe fitter, and in this video, I'm a wannabe fabricator. Now let's get right into it. So this is what I'm shooting for. I would like to make the top and the sides all one piece and bend the corners. I would also like to make the back and the bottom one piece and bend that corner. I don't have a great way to bend quarter inch steel. In fact, I don't have any way to bend quarter inch steel. So I'm gonna improvise. The door is gonna be thin gauge sheet metal and I'll have to figure out a flag as well. This piece that I'm laying out will be the sides and the top of the box. The two lines that I scribe in the middle will be for the bends. The box should come out to 22 inches long, 10 inches wide and 12 high. There's not a whole lot of specs as far as how big your mailbox should be. Uh, one thing, however, is that there should be no ledges on the bottom or sides of your box for mail to catch on as the postal worker pulls it out of the box. Now I'm going to attempt to bend the quarter inch steel plate. First, I slice it with a 16th inch cutoff wheel, followed by an eighth inch grinding wheel, followed by a quarter inch grinding wheel, leaving the groove kind of beveled, going a little less deep each time. Then I check it with a ruler to make sure that I am far enough through to bend it but not so far as to slice the whole way through the plate. Now it's time to bend, so I clamp some square tube on for leverage. I didn't have the groove opened up enough, so I ended up running the razor wheel through it one more time. I square up the sides of the box, and I'm gonna tack in some temporary braces before I weld those inside corners. I'm welding the corners so there's no weak spots, but also so that nobody cuts their hand reaching inside the box. And yes, I'm gonna TIG weld the whole thing, if the job were any bigger, I would probably break out a MIG welder, but the TIG is what I'm used to running, and there's never any cleanup. This is the back and the bottom of the mailbox. I repeat the process here. Slice, bend, weld. It takes a little persuasion to get a good fit up, but I do finally get it tacked, and I can lose the temporary braces. I'm going to weld the back solid, but only stitch the bottom. That way, if any water does happen to get inside, it should drain out. I'm running about 165 amps on the Yes Welder. If you follow me, you know that I have a bunch of Millers, I run an Everlast in the shop, and I have a couple Yes Welders. The reason I'm running the TIG 205 DS for this entire project is just to prove that if you're a hobbyist, if you're on a budget or a beginner, you don't need an $800 or $1,500 machine. The welder I'm using on this project is a sub $300 machine on their website. I linked it below in my description if you're in the market. I'm cutting a flag out of 16 gauge. I'm going to clean it up a little bit. Also cutting a piece of stainless steel piano style hinge for the door. I welded a nut to the flag so I can spin it on a bolt. Never seizes. Very important, especially on stainless steel hardware. I locked the flag on with another nut and I made the flag so that it bottoms out when it's in the upward position. You don't technically need a flag on your mailbox, but if you send outgoing mail, it's a good idea. I'm cutting the door out of 16 gauge also. I'm gonna put a couple bends on it for a handle. One inch flat stock gets stitched to the top of the box as a stopper for the door, and magnets will hold the door closed. Magnets get glued on after the entire box is painted. I clamp the door to the top of the box to ensure it has a tight fit and then I stitch it. I test it a couple times. It ends up being a little bit too tight, so I have to take some material off. I put grooved rubber around the whole door so no one cuts themselves on sharp edges, but also so that no water can get into the box. I bought this rubber and the piano hinge off of Amazon, as well as a lot of the tools you see in this video. I set up an Amazon storefront with all the tools and equipment that I use, so if you see something you're interested in, check that out. It's linked in the description below. Like I said, this box is getting painted by the owners, but I'll polish it quick with a grinder and I'll give it a clear coat so it doesn't rust in the meantime. The product I'm using is Penetrol by Flood. This is actually an additive for paint, but it also works well on its own as a clear coat for metal to prevent rust. And yes, it's in my Amazon storefront too. The final product weighs 79.2 pounds and should last the owner quite a few years. 
And now I'm gonna see how heavy duty my mailbox actually is as I park my truck on top of it. I never doubted it. I wasn't even worried at all. The mailbox didn't flinch. And I can hear the comments already. No, no one's getting sued if someone accidentally hits the box. The one thing to remember, however, is if you make a custom mailbox post, it needs to have a breakaway point. If you don't want to see any more builds or welding projects, be sure to not subscribe. That is the best way to let me know that you're not interested in any more similar content. But till next time, I'm Drew, and I'm Welding America.